What's up guys, it's your Motivational Gamer and welcome to another video. Today we're going to give you guys a comprehensive guide to 6 stars. We're going to teach you guys when you guys should make 6 stars, how to make 6 stars, and who you guys should 6 star to be effective in your game. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing guys is when you guys should make your first 6 star. Okay, Your first 6 star literally is not going to come until after you have a full team of 5 stars. And that full team of 5 stars should be your dungeon team. So after you guys, you know, you guys will go through, you guys will clear fame in uh, with friends. Hopefully that's the most efficient way. And you guys will, you know, use your friends reps, get your light and dark scroll. And then right after you get your light and dark scroll, you're going to head back to anywhere from Garen Forest to to lane for us you guys will finish your like initial you know two to three star or three to four star rune sets and then you guys will jump right into carol's dungeon okay so as you're in carol's dungeon four carol's dungeon or sorry giants before giants be five um you guys are gonna i recommend going to giants this early simply because you have a chance to get mystical scrolls you guys are fleshing out runes and as you get into giants before b5 five star runes start dropping as you get into b6 six star runes start dropping on top of that rainbow angelmon are going to start dropping like crazy because you're going to get a ton of them um, and that's going to be your fodder you know for when we get into how to make um, but for now we talk about when to make as you guys are putting your dungeon team together and you guys are optimizing your runes, you should expect to see your first 6 star by the time you're in B7, okay? By the time you're in B7 Giants and you're farming consistently, uh, B7 to B8 is typically around when you're going to make uh, your first 6 star. We'll talk about who after we talk about how, but um, that's when you guys are going to make your first 6 star, when you should expect to make your first 6 star, okay? So after you guys have established, all right, so... This is when I should have my first six star. The next question is, how do you make your first six star? Okay. Now, before we get into how, there's a there's well, really one prerequisite. Um, roughly, I think it takes it's like 123 stars or something like that to make a six star from scratch. But either way, what you guys need to be looking at before you guys even you know put the foot to the floor or uh, the pedal to the floor, you guys need to look at double XP double XP is literally the only way you should ever spend your time if you guys are trying to, to level up fodder or make a six star uh, I personally now with the monthly rewards I like to plan my six star making around the days where they give the double XP <laughs> so when they give the free double XP coupon the little 12 hour thing because literally that's all you need guys one day of full double XP is ridiculous unless you have to make like four damn six stars honestly um, so one day is in three days unless you want to spend your whole life in scenarios which is unnecessary um that's the only time you guys will buy those so again pro tip i like to wait until com gives me free double xp before i level my fodder but if you guys don't want to wait and you guys want to make crank out six stars as much as you can then then the one day in the three pack three day pack are going to be your best options um now that's that's going to be the prereq before. So again, you don't need that stuff, guys. You know, when I first started the game, you know, I was like, oh, I got to make as many six stars as I can, right? So I made all these six stars and I was still getting my ass stomped on in arena. And and really, guys, this game is all about runes. And that's why I recommend getting that base, uh, you know, five-star team. So a full team, a, a full dungeon team of five stars before you guys even think about making a six star, okay? Uh, so, but anyways, that's besides the point. Now, how do you guys make... A six star so you guys got all your fodder you guys got your double xp what do you do now okay so there's there's a quite a few options uh you'll hear a lot of talk about fame and everybody's still talking about fame everybody's been talking about fame in since you know the beginning of time okay since the damn release of this game now the reason why they talk about fame is just because of the energy efficiency and um you know basically how good uh the xp to energy use uh ratio is however what do you do if you can't do fame Okay, that's the question we're going to talk about today. So typically when you're starting, Mount Sis is, um, is the easiest hell stage in the game. Most three stars with mediocre runes can do Mount Sis almost solo. Okay, if you have decent runes, most three stars can solo Mount Sis. Okay, <laughs> some two stars. So the trick is, guys, when you guys are trying to make six stars, is to find a stage that you can do easily and efficiently. And what I mean by easily and efficiently efficiently is you're able to clear and it's fast okay so you're not going to use units like Ramagos or uh, Degora you know those guys hell no it takes like 10 minutes okay you can literally use any monster you want and what I recommend my, my personal style unless I'm on a solo six star uh, you know speed run 
you know, which I'll talk about here in a second because that's another way to tackle it when you guys are looking at how, is I like to level multiple monsters at a time. So let's say I'm making, um, let's say I, I, I'm leveling my mammoth, right? Because my mammoth right now, my wind mammoth has runes and eventually I want to level him. And my leveling process will start tomorrow when we get the uh, the free 12 hour XP where I'll probably crank out another couple of six stars, okay? But um, let's say I want to level the mammoth. So I know I need to level the mammoth. So typically I'm looking like, okay, do I need, the first question I ask myself is, do I need any fusion monsters level? I'm like, okay, um, do I need a fusion monster? Probably. So let's say, all right, I need Hemos because I'm going to use him to fuse McKean, okay? Um, then what else do I need? Do I need anything else? I'm like, no. Then I just need fodder, right? So I can make whoever a six star. Then I'll just grab two randoms, okay? Two randoms I know I'm not going to use. When you guys are making fodder, make sure that the, the monsters that you level, okay, have no chance in hell of being used ever, okay? Ever. All right? So that's, that's, uh, that's what I recommend. So that way you're not tempted, you don't get sidetracked. And essentially the goal is to make as, as many four stars as you can, okay? As many four stars as you can, 34 stars, 54, however many four stars. And then what I'll do is now that I have this team, then I'll just level. I'll literally, I'll have double XP on and I'll level. Granted, this is going to be a slower process when you're making your six stars, guys. Um, so don't expect this to be like super fast. This is slower, but you know, this is when like you guys got 12 hours or you guys have a 24 hour pack. Um, but you guys can make multiple, you know, four stars at a time. Or, you know, in this way, like w the reason why I tackle this is. If I'm knocking out a fusion monster and I'm knocking out fodder at the same time, I'm killing two birds with one stone. Of course, I can take the fusion monster out and just level three trash mobs at once. Um, of course, that's another option that you guys have, but it all depends on what your goals are. If you don't have any fusions to level, level all trash monsters. But always make sure that you're winning in more ways than one. So this way, I'm leveling my mammoth and I'm leveling fodder at the same time. So I'm making, you know, whatever I need to make instantaneously. Okay? Uh, another way... Uh, that you guys can do this especially like you know if you're just trying to speed farm and what I was talking about before is if you guys just want to make one monster a six star and this is when you have all the fodder already lined up so if you have you know five five star monsters sitting there ready to be fed um, or you got you know 25 four stars just sitting waiting to become five stars or whatever if you're leveling and you already have your fodder you're gonna go straight to rift okay and you're gonna do either normal or hard hard mode is what I recommend and you're going to do this with your strongest monsters. Rift is going to be for you when you're further, you know, in the game and your monsters are already strong and shit. And you can have a solo monster kill everything with double XP. You're getting 80k XP on one monster, okay? Um, so that's when you do that. Otherwise, you're going to find the hardest stage that you can do solo and do it solo. So like if Mount Sis is, the ha is your hardest, but you can solo with the monster that you want to level because let's say he's a five star already and you already have great runes on him you can just solo level him and it's really really fast or if you don't have great runes on him but your friend friendless is the shit then you can just take your monster solo and then use any number of monsters from your friends list um, to help you guys uh, level and be efficient okay so that's how you guys are gonna make it now there's there's one more thing I wanted to cover guys and that's gonna be what to do with your unknown scrolls now typically when I'm in the dungeon okay when, I, when I'm in Carol's, and this is why I recommend Carol's, guys. Because, like, all these Rainbow Mon and shit, like, I have, literally, are from Carol's, okay? All these four stars, all this shit is from Carol's. I get a shit ton of three-star max rainbows. I get two-star max rainbows all over the place. Uh, these eight that are sitting here, literally, I just got today. Because um, I've, <laughs> yeah, I just went through, like, 50 of them yesterday. Uh, but you get so many. So this is what you guys are going to use your unknown scrolls for. And this is the strategy that I employ. It works for me. Um, if you guys have a different strategy, you're welcome to use it. But this is what I do personally. So I I get all my Rainbow Mon and I get so many Rainbow Mon to the point. Because mind you, like I said, I'm only making six stars when Com gives me free double XP. Okay, And that's they, I think they give it twice a month. So, um, so that's what I do. I take these guys and then I go to my summoning thing and I'll use my unknown scrolls. Your unknown scrolls are going to pop two, one stars, two stars, or three stars. All my two stars go to evolving my Rainbow Mon to three stars. All my one stars go to a trash um, three star. Okay, so let's say for instance, um, I want to make uh, this Wind Elemental a four star. 
any one star monsters I have in my box are gonna get fed to her um, money efficient probably not but I'm gonna feed to her because I have to get rid of my one stars for my unknown scrolls right so what that's allowing me to do is eventually she's gonna get to 25 max all my uh, two star max rainbow mon are becoming three stars and then by the time she's by the time I finish making all of these three stars she's probably gonna be level 25 and then I can instantly feed uh, I, I can instantly make her a four star and that's another four star right at the gate and then after you're you know you sort through your unknown scrolls or whatever um, then then I go into back into the scenario and then I level out and make you know multiple four stars at a time etc uh, but that's just to make use of all the tools that I have in front of me now granted in time you're gonna get to a point where you'll have so many unknown scrolls that it just doesn't make sense uh, do you have to use all those unknown scrolls? Hell no. You just use enough so you can feed your two star max rainbow angelmon and make as many three stars as you can, which essentially will help you make as many four stars as you can and make as many <laughs> five stars as you can. And of course, obviously that equates to a six star. Um, so that's you know that's typically my strategy when it comes to it. So I'm either you know again leveling solo if I'm trying to speed a monster. I'm leveling a group if I'm just making multiples. Uh, or if I'm trying to speed farm, then I'm doing rift. Um, so that's what you guys can look at. Uh, there's really no set strategy, uh, you know, to to leveling. Again, guys, um, it doesn't matter what stage you guys choose. Just pick a stage. Is Feynman more efficient? Yes, but if you can't do Feynman, I mean, don't stress about it. The goal of the game is not to make a six-star farmer. Like six-star farmers with bad runes are terrible, guys. Terrible. And that's why I recommend, uh, you know, essentially getting your dungeon team together first before you guys move forward. Um, and then once you guys have your dungeon team, that's going to allow you to get a, a crap ton of fodder. And with a crap ton of fodder, it's easier to make six stars, if that makes sense. Um, you can always make a six star farmer later, especially once you get good runes, you can make any monster a six star. Uh, I saw a video uh, a while back of somebody using a mischievous bat for a six star farmer in Aiden. It was, it was ridiculous, right? Ridiculous. I think it was Aiden. Was it Aiden? I'm pretty sure. But it was a bat, guys. Two-star silver monster farming. Clearing it fast, too. So, you know, farming fast and doing, thing quick, doing things quickly is, are all about your runes. So put yourself in a position to get runes faster, and you guys will find yourself having a lot more success. So now, uh, now that we've talked about when you guys should six-star, and we got into, uh, you know, my little guide of, of, of how to make six-stars efficiently um, and quickly... Uh, now we're going to talk about who. Now, a lot of you guys, um, you know, I've been asking, I've been getting this question a lot. I wondered it a lot, you know, when I was up and coming in Summoner's War, uh, you know, about who I should six star first. And first, I'm going to tell you guys some of the most popular choices for six stars, and I'll tell you guys why. And then I'll give you guys a guideline or a template to uh, decide uh, which, which of your monsters you should six star first. So typically... Uh, most popular first six stars are usually units like Baladian. Uh, I know people are still talking about that six star farmer first bullshit, but it's 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 ineffective, guys. I promise you, it's ineffective. Um, this this you know, and, and and I found this out through testing multiple accounts. Uh, you know, I, I've six star farmers first. I've six star healers first. I've six starred all kinds of crap first. Just testing it right on multiple accounts. And what I found, like units like Bella, um, six starring them first is always good mainly because when you six star unit like Bella first understand that Bella does everything for your party right she breaks defense she heals she increases the attack bar and she steals beneficial effects from the boss she's a unit that's going to be used everywhere in the game giants dragons TOA everywhere um, the only time I stopped using Bella was for raids <laughs> just because her AI I don't know what the hell happens to her AI in the raid but um, that's essentially it. Bella is is a really popular first uh, six star. Um, who else is a popular first six star? Bella. Uh, yeah, Bella is probably really a, a good first six star. And um, yeah, Bella. Um, <laughs> but no. Uh, and then other popular first six stars, of course, any nat five that you pull essentially is going to be uh, one of your first six stars. Reason being is because of this. Okay, any nat five that you pull, chances are. Can, pl can fill multiple roles. So if you pull like uh, Sierra, okay, uh, she can be a farmer, okay, she can be good in dungeons, she can be good everywhere. 
So typically any Nat 5 that you pull outside of that, you know, criteria is going to fulfill multiple roles, guys. So don't be afraid to six star your Nat 5s if you have them, you know. There's there's literally not a Nat 5 that you can pull that I wouldn't be like, yo, you should six star that first, right? So that's that's typically the criteria of, of, of who's who are the most popular six stars. Now, a lot of times, you know, players will six star a four star monster or a three star monster simply because they like them. Okay, this is cool and all. Uh, don't get me wrong; I'm all about vanity, like it's great. But I, I really recommend in the beginning, again, guys, your Light Inugami, uh, any any support unit that's going to to help you immensely through the rest of the game, specifically Bella or Veramos. If you guys have already fused Veramos, Bella or Vero are going to be the most popular two choices for your first six star in the game. Period. Uh, there's there's essentially no need to six star anything else other than like. Let's say if you guys have the Wind Sky Dancer too soon, um, then you can six star her because you're going to use her. But most of the time, guys, especially all the way throughout, you know, Giants all the way to G10, uh, the only two six stars that I recommend priority wise are going to be um, Bella and Vero. Okay, those are the only two. After that, units like Beretta, your Fire Seal for TOA, your Healer, uh, whoever that happens to be, uh, things like that will fall into play on who to six star first. Now, after you get your first six star, because those that's pretty much set in stone. Like those should be your first six stars, no matter what. Period. Done. End of story. Okay. After you guys uh, land your first six star, the question is going to arise: Who to six star now, or what the order is potentially going to be? Now, what I like to a simple format I, I like to use. I like to ask myself: How effective is this monster? In the beginning, as a as a new player, you're not going to know. You know how you know how's a monster? Hi, blah 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 how effective the monster is or how to look at a skill set and be like all right I'm gonna use this for all the dungeons right so how do you tell well one thing is research guys look into it you know uh, find out where the monster is effective you know what I'm saying so for instance it let's look at I'll give you guys two examples okay first we'll talk about one like a no-brainer uh, we'll talk about uh, Beretta okay uh, Beretta's kind of weird, although he's an attack type, most of the time you'll find him ruined with speed, HP, and accuracy, pro tip, or speed, HP, HP, uh, mainly because of his third skill, Phoenix Fury, because he it, he has an AoE continuous damage applicator, uh, and he's dope, okay? So Beretta's going to be used everywhere. He's going to be used in Giants 8, he's going to be used in T all throughout TOA normal, all throughout TOA hard, um, and he can be used in Dragons 10, okay? So a unit that can be used everywhere typically is going to be you know common you know to make a six star next early on in the rotation unit when i look at units i, I ask myself i say okay uh how useful are they and where they're going to be useful at vertihill another one useful all over the place toa dragons etc um but you you typically can look at a skill kit and if the skill benefits more than one monster so if it benefits your entire team or it affects or it affects more than one monster, more than one of your enemies, except, you know, for example, if they have AoE XYZ or AoE this or AoE that, or they're buffing or et cetera. Um, that's how you can, that's how you can kind of look at a monster and know that they'll be an effective six star for you or they'll be valuable to your team. Because in this game, guys, you're creating teams, okay? You're not, you're not doing individual monsters. And, uh, you know, this is an in-depth topic that I'll get into later when we start getting into, uh, you know, advanced strategy and stuff. But you guys have to look at how uh, individual monsters benefit your team as a whole, okay? Because with that being said, let me guys show you guys an example of a selfish monster. Monster just selfish, man. You just can't help it. Okay, selfish. Where's selfish at? Mm, 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 mm. Selfish. Okay, Rena. Okay, Rena selfish as shit. Who else is selfish? Uh, I'm trying to find a monster here that doesn't do anything for anybody on the team but himself. Nope, he does something for the team. Where is the selfish monster at? Come on, yo. <laughs> nope, he is the AoE. Come on, I know there's got to be a selfish monster in here somewhere. Um, selfish, selfish, selfish. Okay. All right, so this guy, Water Bear Man, Gruda. All right, 
So Gruda doesn't do shit for anybody, okay? He strikes, he provokes, I mean, provoke is good, and he just inflicts damage, right? So when he awakens, he gets another skill, damage that he takes, but he doesn't do anything else for anybody but himself. Yes, he has a leadership skill, but we're not talking about leadership skills. We're talking about what a monster does for your team, okay? So when you guys are looking at who should I six star after this XYZ, you have to ask yourself, where does he fit into your team? How does he benefit your team as a whole? And how his skills work with the other skills of your team. So right now this guy provokes, which is great. So he might prevent a monster, you know, from hitting somebody else. But then he just inflicts damage, right? And his third skill is a passive. So he only essentially helps himself. Um, he doesn't do shit for your team. So I wouldn't six star a unit like this, especially early on, uh, because he's not going to help your overall team growth. Okay, if, if you guys understand what I'm saying. Now, when you look at other units, and you know this is a nice way that you guys can tell. Let's say, like when we look at who's the unit that benefits everybody here, um, Tyron. Okay, so Tyron, you know, he freezes an entire team. If he if he's ruined on despair, he can also stun, and then he also applies glancing hit to an entire team. Right. So, what does that do for your team? Well, that makes your team have a less chance of getting hit really hard or crit. And then it also gives your team more opportunities to attack, right? So he's going to be more a more valuable option. Again, AOE targets, targets that buff, units like Chilling uh, that buffs your attack speed and crit rate. Also um, de decreases the enemy's attack speed. Awesome on dragons, awesome on bosses, awesome in TOA. You know, it's, it's, it's things like that. Units that, again, affect the overall flow of battle um, that help your team as a whole and not just as individuals that are primary six-star candidates as you guys move forward in the game. Um, so, I mean, that's typically, you know, kind of like in a nutshell, uh, you, who you should six-star. So, again, like six-star Bella up front, any Nat 5s that you have pulled because they're going to serve multiple purposes. Chances are you'll be using them in dungeons, using them to farm, using them all over the place. And since, you, since you're so excited about them, they're going to get more love. You see what I'm saying? And then after you knock out those initial core six-star units, then you can look at other units that are going to help you in multiple ways. Units like Beretta, units like Chilling, units like uh, your Water Horse. Um, you know, units that benefit your team in more ways than one. And again, guys, do your research. You know, uh, if you guys don't understand how a unit effect, you know, works effectively, especially in the beginning, because you're not going to know. Um, Look it up. Google it. Google the monster. See where that monster is useful at. Uh, find you know where their skill sets are are useful in specific areas, um, and you'll find that um, that will help you quite a bit. Uh, six starring the monsters on a rampage is never good, especially if the runes aren't in place, guys. So to sum it all up, guys, when should you six star? You should six star typically around B7 to B8. Who should be your first six star? Um, Bella or, or units that you're going to use throughout multiple scenarios you know so units that have multiple roles everywhere and how should you six star them as quickly as possible that's it <laughs> don't forget double xp use your own scrolls obviously to, to get your rainbow mine and get all your fodder out of caros literally caros provides all the fodder you ever, ever need never waste money on mystical scroll packs okay uh and, and that's it guys so if you guys got any questions comments concerns about your six star guide definitely let me know i'll be happy to answer them um and we will see you guys in the next video Peace.